Honestly, I kind of like my, my setup here. I like my setup here, man. I like my setup here. I like my setup here. You guys are being silly. I think this looks good. Yeah, it's good. I don't know why you flamed me. What do you mean? You said no. Because Big Big Jeff, everything you've said has been wrong. What you've said is the contrary to what I've shown. Fuck, that's ugly. <laughs> What's happening to my boxes? <laughs> What's happening to my boxes, man? That was, they're flying, bro. DRX zone. <laughs> nah. <laughs> that, that, bro, the formatting on this fucking app is trash. Bro, it's half, half disappeared. Why is the formatting so trash? No more view. Contenders. All right, we have found it. All right, th this looks neat. I'm not gonna lie, I'm happy with this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do our world's team tier list, uh, which is rather simple. I think uh, a lot of the analysts are going to have very, very similar notes. I think uh, in the grand scheme of things, right? I think, um, you know, on my end, uh, th the question mark uh, column, you know, the whales, loud, movie star, uh, Rainbow 7, you know, DFM, CFO, GAM, pa uh, PSG. I haven't watched these regions. I've only covered the major regions, and this is where my knowledge comes from, so I don't want to be unfair. Maybe, maybe I'm gonna watch these games from PSG, and maybe there's something interesting, and maybe I would move them up, you know, or something like this. And all of you, all of you out there are waiting for the player tier list. We will be releasing the player tier list in unison, me and Dom. I'm actually, we're going to do a top 25 player list rather than a top 20, a top 25, we, we, we like, I think Dom told me it's just more interesting because then you get to see the inclusion of like some Western players uh, and so forth. I, I think it's in general a lot more interesting. Uh, on Thursday, we'll be releasing 25 to 16. Uh, like we're going to do that um, basically uh, on our own, own and then at when we both released our complete list we're going to come together we're going to have a discussion of each player and then make a united list uh, so we're going to uh, be uh, baking a lot of content in the coming days about uh, of course um, at the world championship but for now uh, basically I wanted to uh, talk about how I formatted this uh, don't worry too much about the percentages you know I'm not an odds maker uh, I think that um, in the end, what, what I'm trying to present here is there are teams with certain percentages to win in my mind, right? Maybe the percentages are off by, by, by some numbers, uh, but it's more about like, if, if you want to look at it in a simple way, the ordering of the teams from left to right on the column. So for example, let's say if, uh, if uh, Cloud9 is number one and then Fnatic two, and this means that C9 is number one and then Fnatic two and then three and then it goes down like that, right? Obviously, this is just an example and this is in no shape or form uh, what I intended to put up here. So the top one, I think it's pretty straight, it's straightforward and easy. Uh, my reasoning for JGG being the top one, number one contender coming into this tournament, they've had a phenomenal year. Any criticism that anyone has towards JDG uh, happens in games that are unimportant. Even if you look at some of the games where, you know, some criticism was towards Kanavi or Knight, it's like, oh, occasionally he kind of plays bad. But it's like, if you look at their series score, even in summer, when they were underperforming, you know, they were still up there and they ended the season top two. And that is a world where you try your hardest to find criticism towards JDG. In my mind, I think that on each individual position, JDG have a top two player in their position. Top two. And I think this 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 conversation, I, I, like that that Kanavi sometimes ends games or whatever the fuck, I think this is way overblown. I think this is like a complete reach to try to find some kind of reasoning uh, as to why these are not good enough, you know? I think the players and the people that are not too high on missing, I think that... Uh, People are really, really, really underestimating missing. Really, really underesting, uh, underestimating missing. I think in a lot of cases, it's like missing is the Mickey to Ons Hilly. I think that's the easiest comparison to make. Missing is damn consistent, has a fantastic champion pool, performs at a solid 90 to 95% all the time. On has games where he performs at 100% and really, really does crazy ass shit, right? This is on. He's the squeezer. Hilly is also a squeezer, right? 
obviously i think on and missing are a level above these two because of just the level of competition and resistance that they've played against and i think mickey is in fantastic form but on and missing are like the better variants of that right i think that missing is a very very underrated player i think missing is super super good mechanically very very solid it's like if you look at the, like if, if you look at missing and rulers lane phase really really good you know for the longest time people are going to say yo he's laning with ruler or or something like this uh this is of course this matters but missing lanes with ruler so he's going to lane as if he lanes with ruler how are we, how are we going to hold that against him and missing plays really really well like the way he lanes is super fucking good it's like if you if you even look at the msi games of him uh, playing rakan he is so damn good so damn good and on was up there too in my mind on has super super high performances and he has performances that are on the lower end but i think missing is damn consistent and i think that he deserves more praise i think for the longest time especially in spring korea took the spotlight of the community uh, for the longest time and i think that put a lot of supports under the radar that eventually broke out of this community shell that was on these players uh especially after msi and onwards coming into summer but i think on is probably the support with that with the highest ceiling you know but missing is just solid you know i i, I think really for those people that are less l less hyped about missing just need to take a look at for example the msi games but nevertheless uh jdg i think that as a roster as a whole in terms of uh, the preparationary work how they play together uh, i think there's very very little very little flaws when it comes to this team this is a, a a very very well put together team the budget is behind it and they are clearly on a mission but i'm doing this as we go and i think this probably will be where the biggest surprise will come in and the reason i want to put billy billy second and i think a lot of people are down on them ever since their best of five losses and i think that's f perfectly fair I think for people that have that reasoning, I think that's perfectly fair. But I think there is a unique, unique portion of how the tournament is structured is due to the massive pause that is between, that is between the summer finals and then coming in all the way to the world championship. We have never had such a long break when you can argue what a break means when you have the asian games for some of these players right you can argue what a break means in that context but billy billy just due to the nature of the pause between the finals of most regions and the world championship i'm going to put more weight on the whole year and if i look at billy billy in terms of the challenges that they faced in throughout this entire year and also the challenge that they conquered and the way that they grew and the peaks that they achieved i look at billy billy as a team that is a that is really really a strong fucking contender really fucking strong contender really strong contender for me i think billy billy is the team that can come into this tournament and for me they are the second favorite to to win it all billy billy has a very very poor record against jdg and that's something that they will have to face when that shit will occur right but if you look at billy billy right if you look at billy billy in in regards to what they did in summer split right i have high hopes for this team and i don't put as much weight on the bo5s because i think in terms of the meta shift i think billy billy struggled there right and those nuances matter in the short term because the competition in the lpl is ruthless very very ruthless but I think with the with with the time in between the LPL finals and then of course the World Championship, I'm going to take more stock in what the teams have done the entire year. Billy Billy carried so much momentum from MSI. Even it started in playoffs in 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 spring, over to MSI and then continuously into summer. And then they dropped BO5s in the playoffs. And I think that is way too heavy on them when i i just i just value their entire year so so much so so much for me the follow-up is lng right i think the the key thing for lng right what really really cemented them right really 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 cemented them as magnificent i think was the improvement 
of Harp and the improvement of Zika. I think that really, really gave a platform to how good, how fucking good Scout and, and Tarzan is. And then additionally, sorry, I, what, what did I say? Did I say Harp? I always confuse these names. The support of LNG. Is it Hang or Harp? Why am I confusing it? It's Hang, no? Hang. Where did I get Harp from? Nevertheless, for me, I know that there's a lot of players out there that love Knight, right? Like, but Scout, in terms of his gameplay in summer, I don't think anyone came close to him. Well, close. I think people came close to him, sure. But Scout, for me, if I isolate the summer split, it's like as I'm making my top tier list, Scout has many arguments for being the number one player coming into this tournament. And I'm not saying I'm doing that for certain, right? But Scout has had such a crazy, crazy year. Crazy year. Absolutely monstrous year. Crazy year. Guess people forgot what Zeka did to Scout at Worlds? Bro, it's like that shit is also so overblown, which bothers me big time. That shit was so overblown. First and foremost, it was a year ago. But I want to let you guys know something. It's like, I firmly believe that Zeka crushed Chovy way harder than he crushed uh, Scout. I'm just going to say it. I think he crushed Chovy way harder than he crushed uh, Scout. Zeka had one of the best perfor individual performances of all time. One of the best individual performances of all time ever at a tournament. He is most certainly like in top five of best individual performances of all time. Zeka, during that month span, he was insane. Like if, if Zeka played like he did during the World Championship for like three, four years, which is a really, really big ask, GOAT status. Boom. <laughs> but I think that even though Scout, Zeka got the better of Scout, it's like when, when you fall behind in Silas Akali matchup, you, you are going to... You, you have to fight your way out of it, you know? And and that's just how it is. Uh, but back to LNG, right? I think Scout and Tarzan were super, super solid. I think Tarzan's biggest problem was as, as playoffs began and pressure games began to, you know, amount and they were on his shoulders, I felt like Tarzan played worse and worse. This has been the biggest curse of Tarzan over the last couple of years in my mind. Even though I think that Tarzan has been fantastic, always when it came to the BO5s, he kind of fell short. But in summer, in summer, Tarzan conquered that in my opinion. He conquered that. And Tarzan is definitely up there. I think that LNG, you know, Tarzan, Scout, the addition of Gala. God bless Gala. I, I don't know what's going to happen with his contract situation. Maybe we see him back at RNG next year, you know? Um, I think LNG is a really, really strong team. And even though LNG beat Billy Billy, I'm going to put more stock into Billy Billy just due to how impactful they've been all year long, even leading into those best of fives that they dropped against LNG. The follow up for me is Gen G. So I think Gen G. Gen G is so, so my definition of Genji, okay? My definition of Genji. I think they are the definition of like a coach's dream. <laughs> this is a team that has slowly, slowly built percentages over the year, right? So le let me let me let me like just draw up this concept for you guys, okay? Let me draw up this concept. A performance, right? If someone plays at 100%, it means that they don't fucking miss opportunities. They squeeze everything. They take the right risks. They fucking really, really murder you. They like have those once in a lifetime performances type of games, you know? The players and teams that are going to pursue this, okay, are going to also have 70% gamers games, you know? If we think about the best teams, right? Gen Z is the type of team that has incrementally, right? They had a 70% performance, then to 75% performance, 80% performance. They're always going to find themselves at a very, very solid line. There's not going to be any element of chaos. There's not going to be any element of pursuing, you know, the perfect game. They're going to take their guaranteed leads. They're going to lane super, super well, and they're going to, uh, 
basically play a very very structured and disciplined game to always perform at an 85 percent genji is a very very tough team to get an upset win against very very difficult because they are very disciplined they are very cold but when they play against teams and players that are of equal level and capable of really really squeezing scenarios this is where genji falls short that discipline and that structure and that macro becomes a lot more irrelevant in cases where games are a lot more dynamic that's the key thing that's the key factor genji i don't believe this is a team that is good at playing dynamic games and i think at the highest level you need to be able to play dynamic games because the games will be dynamic they will be dynamic they are very good at playing structured games but when the game becomes dynamic i don't like it we saw it at for example msi which is a long time ago but it's a good example to draw from when when chovi needed to look for opportunities to break the enemy team and look to engage because they had very very narrow windows to break the opportunity and break the enemy team they didn't take them because it comes with an element of risk and this is how i view genji i think genji is a fantastic team but i think when they're playing you know when they get to work in a meta for a long time and they get to digest the meta I think this is where they are super strong. When things are structured, when they have the lane matchups to, to follow up on them. I think additionally, I think Delight has been an absolute delight. Delight has, is playing so, so well, right? He's playing so, so well. I think Delight has been fantastic. Chovy, Chovy has been really, really good. You know, Peanut, best jungler out of Korea. No one comes close. No one comes close. Somehow, you know, the, the weird, we're in the weirdest timeline where Pays is doing Ruler's job for Genji well, but at the same time, Ruler in JDG has found a new peak six years after winning the World Championship. Somehow, how crazy is that? How crazy is that? Isn't Kanavi better? Kanavi is coming out of the LPL. I don't care about the, the flag that is next to the name region we're talking about regions when we talk about uh everything now let's see this is something else that deserves to be up here i just need to make sure that i see these logos that's why i'm putting them here uh, forgive me this is not uh, like an estimation i think the follow-up for me uh would probably i would put t1 here i think that t1 it's like it's weird right it's I, I'm, I'm trying to think now like as we speak which order i would do this because i'm doing this this is all like I'm just putting it out there as, as as we're going, right? So it's like, I think that KT, KT as a player, right? Like KT as a team, I think that Keen is something that is, you know, exciting to have on your team. I think it's, it's weird because the idea of KT is always a lot more interesting than how their tournaments end. KT had their worst performances against T1 when they lost. Uh, they, they looked like a shell of themselves. Uh, like after Lehens and Keen and his team is just uh, completely tearing up the regular season, they fell flat in a similar way to Billy Billy, I'd say, after dominating the summer split, right? Uh, Billy Billy has a lot more under their belt, especially after MSI, and I think that their season was a lot more impressive, you know, considering the 15 and 1, right? I think, I think probably in my mind, I would say I would put T1 above kt for now i think t1 just just the level of their individual players i think when it comes to gumoyushi keria zeus say what you want about them i think they are very very strong strong individual players faker is a weird one because for the entire year fakers had like one two three champions where he performs at an elite level and then everything else is just very like mediocre you know mediocre for a team that is supposed to be a contender to win the league you know last in the side right we had the quesante like like faker quesante mid bro what he was doing was absolutely mental right it's like quesante faker quesante he just found himself everything clicked i think that uh he basically, you know, he he basically played on the lead level. I think the same thing could be said for Azir. But when those champions are out of the pool or out of the way, 
Faker is not the same, is, is not an elite player. And I'm not going to sit here and talk about intangibles because I think that it's such a vague conversation that is not necessary. But I think that having that flaw in the mid lane against the rest of the teams above, I think is tough. And I think that, that Faker, when he plays those 2-3 champs, if he somehow can find a way, if he can somehow find a way to expand further than that, then maybe he's decent. Yagao perma underrated, even my chest perma underrating Yagao. So T1, we put T1 KT. Like this, this is where things are going to get a little bit uh, goofy. Uh, they're gonna get a little bit goofy here. I think... I will basically... have a setup like this. Let me just place the rest to, to, to have, uh, have the aesthetic uh, set and done, and then I will elaborate on the rest. Honestly, I'm quite happy with this setup here. I, I think qu I'm quite happy with this setup. I'm quite happy with this setup. Um, I think maybe, maybe... Maybe, like, if you catch me at a different time, I would move this back and forth. So, KT we talked about already. T1 we talked about already. I think KT, what I can add, which is true for owner too, it's like, I think T1 and KT, they have a huge jungle problem. Massive jungle problem. Their junglers are not keeping up. And it's like, when, when I compare KT jungler, T1 jungler, to, for example, Weibo jungler, like... For, for, for those that are so down on, on Weibo, right? It's, it's like looking at just the roster, okay? Looking at just the roster. It's like the critique against Light is that he's not ruler or he's not the ADs above him. Fine. But he's damn fucking solid. Crisp is really, really great. Really, really good. The Shy is insanely inconsistent. Straight up fucking liability in a lot of cases. Sometimes does some good stuff. But I think that uh, I, I'm not so big on the shy, you know? I don't I, I think I'm not super super big on the shy, right? But then looking at the rest, it's like Xiaohu has had Xiaohu has had a fantastic summer. Fantastic summer. Weiwei has been really, really good. Really, really good. Weiwei has been really insane. I would put Weiwei before Owner. I would put Weiwei before Cuz any day of the week. Weiwei has been way better. I think that Jiaohu as a player has had a fantastic year. And that, like, that's why I don't mind at all when the chatter before said Yagao is the fourth worst mid laner that are being sent out. Because the mid laners that are coming out of the LPL this year are insanely good. I think Cuz did fine on Viego, fine on Sejuani. But when he got pressed there, I think that he fell off. So I think I think this is this is a team like this this is a wild card. The, the, the fucking Weibo gaming is a wild card. Down one is also a wild card. I can see a world where both of these teams over, uh, perform better than these two teams. These these two teams they have strong enough rosters to be wild cards, but they have like glaring flaws that we've all seen, right? Glaring flaws that we've all seen. Down one, swapping support like clothes. Kana. What's up with Kana? But then they have Canyon, Showmaker, and Deft. Uh, down one as a team, I think that their qualification inspired a lot of hope. I think that their qualification inspired a lot of hope. I think we saw Showmaker of old. I think there were a lot of games where we saw Canyon of old. And I think that inspires a lot of hope, you know? I think Showmaker, Canyon, I think that at their peak, they had the best cooperation between two players that I have ever seen. Showmaker and Canyon, their period from 2020, 2021, 2022, even 2022, as crazy as it might sound, they, they were really, really good. And that is, inspires hope, you know? That inspires hope, you know? I could see a world, honestly, as I mentioned, it's like the, the difference between these two, it's like it depends on the day. But... Like, you catch me at a, at, at a different time, I'm going to think differently a bit about these two. What's, what's weird to me, right, about, about the whole down one thing is that if you think about these two teams being the, the last seed to qualify out of their own region, Weibo had way tougher competition in my mind than down one did, you know, to get through their, their qualification process. I think that EDG 
you know, EDG, OMG, you know, there were some brawlers in there, you know, at the end of LPL that uh, didn't make it all the way through. Top esports, fucking top esports, man. Weibo, like, Weibo beat out some fucking tough ass teams. And then you had Dan one, they had to beat out some, some bums. Let's be honest. They had to beat out some bums to qualify. They had to beat out some fucking bums to qualify. Like that would be that would be so fun to watch a tournament where you play you place the five fifth seed and sixth seed from all of the regions to play against each other. Imagine you have top esports, Jackie Love, Rookie. You know, they're walking in and then they have to play against fucking SK gaming, you know? And fucking DRX, you know. Funny thing is, funny thing is, how how sick would it be if Dam One just they just break the hands of both of their supports and then they they just they just recruit Beryl. How how sick would it be if they just got Beryl back here? You know, give him some, give <laughs> give give him some mother flipping, uh, give him some mother flipping, you know, <laughs> some 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 free some free pack openings in Genshin Impact or Honkai Star Rail or whatever the fuck he's playing at the time. <laughs> uh, Ah, uh, it's uh, it's interesting. Ah, uh, it's like that's that's what's holding me back, you know, between these two, between these two. I, I, I this this is what's holding me back between these two. Hey, hey, hey! Oh, yo, Jonas! Hey, hey, hey! Thank you very much for the ten gifts and subs. I appreciate what's you. Thank you very much. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, that's amazing. Up, Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So, and then we have G2, right? G2 as a team, I think the tournament format, the fact that they get to bootcamp in Korea is going to be very healthy for them, right? I think that the biggest argument against G2 is the fact that in Europe, you get away with a lot more when it comes to the lane phase. It's something that Wunder talked about, right? And I think that this, where, this is where G2 will be challenged in a very, very good way when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to their personal and their team improvement. I think G2 as a team and a project has done a fantastic job to keep improving in a region that doesn't offer too much resistance. I think after MSI, the changes that G2 has done has been super, super good and healthy for them. Super good and healthy for them. And when it comes to their practice, right? I think that them bootcamping in Korea and having three weeks of scrims in Korea is really going to hone uh, their lane phase because individually G2 are sending some of the sharpest players that we have in Europe. And I think G2 has the potential of causing upsets against these teams, right? Didn't they have like 60% win ratio for MSI scrims? Yeah, but I think any, any rumor you heard out of MSI scrims were completely fake. It's like, you know, when when uh, when Doinbi was leaking, wow, the Chinese teams are screaming. It's like, bro, JDG hasn't even arrived. It was like Billy Billy, like on some fucking, you know, Billy Billy on some jet lag shit, you know, playing a scrim block and not giving a fuck. You know, it's like, it really doesn't matter, you know? It's like JDG hadn't fucking shown up yet. And I think the screams, the scrims. So who did they scrim against, Roma? Do you guys have the link? Find the link for me. Find the link for me. All games, 39-23. Versus LCK LPL, 29 games, 15-14. That's decent. That's decent. That's solid. G2 is a fucking great scrim team. They have really, really good... But this is, this is very decent, right? But also, when we saw the matches on stage, you know, like, what this says more than anything, right, is... To my to my point from before is that g2 is a team that is going to get a lot out of screaming in korea that's that's what i extrapolate from this that this is a team that is capable of improving a lot against the korean teams because they will push themselves to the end of the game but doing well in scrims doesn't translate well to your doesn't translate directly to performance on stage but it translates directly to your potential improvement during a bootcamp. I think G2 after MSI improved immensely and I think that they really restructured how they play the game. Uh, and I think that's very positive. I think that G2... That the main concern, right, is G2... They come from a region where their strengths are evident. 
But those strengths are the standard when it comes to the, the LPL and the top end of LCK. I mentioned this, you know, for the, for the G2 fans. Um, I am a G2 fan. I love G2. I love Mickey. I love the players. I love G2. I think G2, fantastic brand. I love G2. I'm a G2 fan. G2 need to make sure that they were, win the first BO1s. If they won, win the first two BO1s, let me tell you how important the first two BO1s are. The first two BO1s are so important because if you win two BO1s, you have three best of threes that you can lose to then be out of the tournament. You have to win one out of three best of threes. One out of three best of threes. And I can see a world where G2 beat Damwon, beat Weibo. But I think the day when that happens, I think there is reason to celebrate. There is reason to celebrate. There's definitely reason to celebrate. Like, sure, I'm ex-Fanatic coach. If, if I'm in competition and I'm against G2, I will make an enemy out of them because they are the team to beat. But during my time when I've been teamless, G2 have treated me with such respect. I've been... I've been a part of their content. I've been a, they, they've, they found a way to make me involved. I work with them for MSI and they've treated me with utmost respect. I really, really appreciate that. I really, really appreciate that. And also it's like G2, you know, as, as a fan of the LEC, I, I, I enjoy watching G2 play, right? I think G2 can definitely upset these teams on the same line as them. That's what I want to highlight. I think that they have chances to upset the teams on the same line as them. But I think to, to break into here will require a miracle. Will require a miracle. And miracles happen, like look at last year's Worlds. So after G2, I think that Fnatic is the strongest team coming out of um, uh, the West. I think the, 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 the challenge that Fnatic will, will face is how they incorporate Oscarini again after his hand surgery, right? Uh, w w how how is that going to happen right because it's it's not necessarily only that he needs to be fit for the match he needs to be fit for practice right and i think that's super super important i think that humanoid is a fantastic player i think humanoid and razork these are these are elite level players that we are sending from europe that can definitely compete um trimby I don't know if Trimby can find a way to replicate his game five performances of of the of the of the fucking BO fives that he played. Like Trimby game five, crazy. Trimby game five somehow uh, a demon is awakened. Like he had a Nautilus game in game five, he had an Alistair game in game five. Like he had some crazy, crazy, crazy games. And I think Trimby, you know, once again, experienced player. And he seems to be very, very momentum-based, you know? Noah is a player that seems to be finding his confidence more and more. Um, we had that game four and he had to bounce back in game five. Like, those are cool stories that reinforce your personal identity, right? I think that Fnatic as a roster, as a whole, I think that they are uh, very, very solid. I think that they are the second best team coming out of the West. Some people might be surprised that C9 is here. And maybe I'm putting too much stock in what I believe, you know. So it's like my biggest criticism and what pissed me off about C9 is that they have not found ways to get better in, in North America. They have relied on Berserker to carry them all the way up until the point that they lost. And that's extremely disappointing, especially for a team that went to MSI and, you know, everything was highlighted for them extremely disappointing that this team hasn't found found ways to get better because i've watched every single c9 game this year every single game of c9 i watched this year every single fucking game but they haven't gotten better they started off hot and they've been the same and that's extremely disappointing and my last hurrah my last point of belief here for c9 i probably i would i would probably do this uh, but i will finish talking about c9 their boot camp in Korea, maybe they will find the stimulation that will actually help them improve. Because I do think that they have some strong players on the team. I think Berserker is a fucking demon. And if I'm going to give career advice, if I'm speaking to Berserker right now, Berserker, it's time to go to LPL, buddy. 
uh, because you're such a fucking good ass player you deserve so much more the reason i put even though energy won the split right even though our energy won the split i think it is too circumstantial for me to believe that they're going to do anything significant right I, I i don't think that energy is going into this tournament as the best north american team and they have an opportunity to cement themselves as that i think that in the window of those two weeks where energy had the playoff run right i think that they were the best na team at the time but i think that they haven't had enough longevity for me to believe that this, this is going to stick you know i don't think this is going to stick probably i, I put bds like that Team Liquid the same way. It's like Team Liquid, I think it's a two-man team. I think Summit, I think Summit is great. I think that uh, Pioshik had a good run. I think Appa has some really, really cool champions that he plays. But it, it, I say this with a very heavy heart, but, uh, you know, like, Code JJ, man. Code JJ, I love Code JJ. But what's going on there with Code JJ? You know? I feel like uh, Team Liquid could maybe, you know, squeeze a little bit of something, you know, with the right champs. I think Summit and Pioshik, very strong players. But I would I would assume, in my mind, that these teams here, that the four teams above them would beat these three teams. I think, I think this is it, boys. I think this is it. I'm trying to think where to put BDS. I'm trying to think where to put BDS. It's, it's like weird because... Uh, I guess I guess the, the main thing that I should go through in my mind is Golden Guardians versus BDS, right? I need to go through the my, in my mind BDS versus Golden Guardians, okay? So, Golden Guardians, in their playoff run, I think that Gory and River played very, very bad. They had the worst two weeks of their entire year. Um, I believe that they will recover from that, 100%. I think that they will recover from that, 100%. I think that they will bounce back, you know? Uh... I think that they will perform better than they did in the BO5s. That's for sure, right? I think that as a team, I think that Golden Guardians, what they have as an edge over BDS is the fact that 3v3 mid, they are way sharper. They are way sharper. But I think that BDS bot lane is way better. Way better. I think that Crowny, like Stixie plays in a way, it's like... You have the three musketeers dominating the game, but Stixie that doesn't doesn't want that, bro. He keeps getting losing sums on bot. He keeps getting caught on bot. Uh, he's he's always always giving for some godforsaken reason. If Stixie can transition into like thirty minutes, thirty five minutes, I think that he does decent. But at this point, you know, at this point, which AD doesn't, you know, which AD doesn't, right? So I'm not too hyped about. Mr. Stixie. I think Licorice versus Adam is a very, very interesting matchup because Licorice is the type of player that could play the weird counters to Adam's champions. But Adam, the way I view Adam, Adam is such a squeezer, you know? If Adam catches you slipping, catches you dreaming, Adam is the perfect player to put you in the dirt, make you eat it. This is Adam's specialty. If he catches you unprepared, he really, really drags you. He drags you. But the Golden Guardians have been aware of this matchup for long. I hope, I hope, right, that Adam... The thing is, it's like something that's been so underutilized, right? So underutilized for Adam, I think. I think Adam, fantastic Renekton. Fantastic Renekton. Also, you know what? Fantastic Aatrox. Really insane on these two champs. Really, really good. He's really, really good on these champs. It, like, let a man game a bit, you know? Let a man game. It's like in the Bruiser class. Stride Breaker, Gore Drinker. These champions are really, really good. I think that Adam is, Adam is on a good patch. Adam is on a good patch. But I worry about Golden Guardians' experience. I think Golden Guardians have experience. And I think additionally, Golden Guardians, I think their trio is very, very strong. And I think Golden Guardians, they've shown that they know how to, to close out games and win games. And I think that's important. But BDS, I would favor their bot lane. It's a tough one. I didn't, I haven't put too much thought into GG versus BDS. I haven't. But I think Licorice, I think Licorice as a player, I don't, I wouldn't worry about Licorice against Adam. That's the thing. I think there's some players I would worry, but I think Licorice will do well. 
I think Licorice is the type of player to play the right champs. You know, he, he's the type of top laner to play the right champs. Another thing for BDS, I think that Nuke as a player, I think Nuke as a player, he had, I think that he, he found his peak performance. He found his peak performance, I think, in uh, the BO5s at the end. Nuke was very solid in the BO5s and Golden Guardians were quite unimpressive. I think Golden Guardians have a sharper 3v3. I think, I think River, River and Huhi, I think that they are better at controlling the game, but I think Labrov is better at uh, laning. I think Crowny Labrov are going to be way better at laning than Huhi and Sixy. Way better. And it might just be doors out, lights out already from there. I think that uh, that, that Crowny and, and Labrov will lane much better than them. Way better. But I think that River and, and Huhi are better at controlling games. That's where I'm at. Are you the one who chose Adam from KC for Fnatic? Uh, yeah, I was a part of that, yeah. But I think this would conclude my, my, my tier list for, for the teams. And basically because I did it so impromptu, right? I could see, I could see, you know, some of these positions, maybe on a different day, would like, they would like swap back and forth, you know? They would like switch back and forth. And I would have like a different feel about it, you know? Maybe there's like some, some like different things that can hop around. But this is what I feel right now. And this is what I'm thinking right now as I did the impromptu list. I, I, I am happy with, with where it is.